In the headlines, Lagos government orders arrest of developer, others over seven-story building collapse. Gunmen kill NSCDC officer, kidnap three family members. Federal government files fresh 24 charges against former DCP Abakari. And on the foreign scene, Kenyan Supreme Court upholds Ruto's win in presidential election. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Hosseina Usman. And now the news in detail. The Lagos state government has ordered the arrest of the developer and other building professionals working on the collapsed seven-story building in the Victoria Island area of the state. The order came from the Lagos State Commissioner of Physical Planning and Urban Development, Idris Salako, during his visit to the site on Sunday. According to the commissioner, the developer and other professionals violated the state's planning laws. The commissioner said investigation has been initiated to determine the cause of the building collapse, adding that police are on the trail of the developer and all professionals involved in the project, such as architects, builders and engineers. He enjoined Lagosians to join hands with the state government in maintaining vigilance in the built environment by reporting any untoward developments in their vicinity. The federal government has said that the worst in Nigeria's security challenges is over. This was disclosed at a joint press briefing by the Minister of Information, Defense, Interior and Police Affairs at the Press Center Radio House Abuja. We'll bring you details of this in our subsequent bulletin. Now on security, gunmen have killed an officer of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in Akiti State along Okia Corps at Jowa Road in Ikole, local government area of the state. The NSCDC public relations officer in Akiti, Tolua Folabi, who confirmed the incident on Sunday, said investigations were ongoing to arrest the perpetrators of the evil act. The officer who was traveling from Adoekiti to his hometown was attacked in his vehicle and shot dead while the gunman kidnapped his younger brother and two children with him in the car. Condemning the killing, the lawmaker representing Nikola constituency in Ekiti State House of Assembly, Adoye Aribasoye, said the attack was callous and wicked. He called on the federal government to accede to the request of Nigerians for the creation of state police to tackle all manners of senseless killings being perpetrated by criminals at the grassroots levels. Gunmen have abducted 32 travelers around Ifong in Oshie local government area of Ondo State. The Public Relations Officer of Ondo Police, SP Fumilayo Dunlami, confirmed the incident. Condemning the killing, the lawmaker Ikole constituency in Ekiti State House, Adeoye Aribasoye, said the attack was callous and wicked. Uh, away from that, Odunlami, however, disclosed that one of the victims has been rescued and is now giving the police useful information regarding the incident in a bid to rescue other victims. It is not yet established whether the kidnappers have reached out to the families of the victims for payment of ransom to secure their release. Still on security, terrorists have attacked a mosque in Brno, killing the chief imam and three other worshippers. Many people were injured in the attack, which occurred in Gulde community of Askeraoba local government area on Friday. Reports say the terrorists, numbering 20, launched the attack early by opening fire on worshippers who had finished their fajr prayers at the mosque. The terrorists also looted livestock and food stuff and set ablaze two vehicles in Gulde community, which is located at some parts of Sambisa forest in the state. Footages have emerged on how bandits attacked a private residence of Project Quarters in Funtua, Katsuna State. The footages show the bandits attempt to break into the house but were frustrated and then resorted to firing gunshots to scare people in the neighborhood. For the past two weeks, kidnappers have put residents of Bakori and Funtua local government areas under siege, kidnapping people almost on a daily basis. The recent purchase of new armored personnel carriers by Katsuna state government is keeping hopes of the residents alive that the war against banditry will be won. 
In politics, candidates seeking political offices in 2023 must come up with development agenda that will address the needs of the people. At a one-day colloquium held at Mubaya House, Kanojiga Professionals Forum expressed a resolve that achieving sustainable development in line with a sustainable master plan in two states will no longer be negotiable. Trust TV correspondent Idris Jibrin reports. Organized by Kano and Jigao Professional Forum, this one-day colloquium drawn its participants from all the political parties across Kano State with the aim to set a 10-year strategic development plan ahead of the 2023 governorship, national and state assemblies elections. This colloquium is intended, among others, to serve as a veritable platform for collaboratively generating ideas on identifying and agreeing on the critical issues facing the two states and their solutions. Presenters from various professional work streams covering health, education, governance, infrastructure and logistics, technology, legal and regulatory, as well as media and communications, each provided guiding documents by which strategic development could be achieved across Kano states. One important thing is on concurrent list. The federal government should do its bit here. The state government and the local government, there should be harmony and synergy. What we saw during the pandemic is the total disconnect between the federal institution and the state institution. Now, we should announce this relationship to ensure that we have established a proper referral center. The way we in Boko try to reform the system is to say, integrate it into the Western education system. And that's the one thing that the people who patronize it don't want. Because they have a choice. They see a primary school, they take their child instead to a Quranic school. Okay, so my suggestion is talk to them, reform the system, modernize it, don't westernize it. For the candidates, a forum like this will significantly encourage political office holders in overcoming the socioeconomic challenges of their people by providing a sustainable development in all aspects of life. For me, I will cherish this and the reports that have been given to me. I will make sure that I go through it and I am urging all the participants for us to please go through these submissions and see the submissions and by the time what Allah has destined on us happen we should try and do the best out of it at the end of this colloquium all these political party candidates will be expected to be fully informed about the developmental needs of the people for achieving sustainable development across the states Idris Jubrin Trust TV News Kanu the governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Soludo, has been advised to step in and resolve the crisis rocking the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APCA. Chairman and one of the leaders of the party, Chief Edozie Njoku, stated this in a chat with Trust Television. According to him, if the disagreement within the party is not resolved, the party may go under. The report. I advise Soludo to really find a way very quickly for us to come to the table and, and get peace in line so that Africa candidates can, um, can start doing something. All of them, are, everyone is just sitting down and um, confused. They are confused. He is the governor of the state. Um, there's something we talk about politics. When you are in election, you are PDP, APC. As soon as you win, you are a, go you are a governor of all. Saludo is the governor of Africa. He should rise to that level. What the rest of the Southeasters are saying that we have a special love for the party. At least we are meant to be five brothers. Let's move it out of. You people have only been able to keep one governor. You got one and he ran away. So we need to, you need to expand the party. Then we also need to expand to the whole of Nigeria. It's a lovely party with a lovely logo. So I don't see why we should restrict it to um, an OEA kind of a thing. No, it shouldn't be like that. Still talking politics, Senator representing Kogi West Senatorial District, Smart Adeyemi, has proposed a bill seeking to end nomination of candidates of same religion for president and vice presidential positions. 
Adeyemi, who disclosed this at a news conference in Abuja on Sunday, said there is need to forestall the contentious issues on nomination of candidates of same religion by political parties after 2023 presidential election. Adeyemi said the bill tagged a bill for an act to amend the Electoral Act 2022 and for other related matters connected 2022 is seeking to amend the Electoral Act to promote religious harmony in the country by discouraging political parties from fielding running mates of same religion with the presidential candidates. Stakeholders in Nigeria's justice system have advocated a review of plea bargain that is meant to ensure restorative and quick justice dispensation. They view the section in the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Act as giving lifeline to corrupt public office holders. Respondents told Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman that the legislation has done more harm than good to Nigerians. The concept of plea bargain, which was borrowed from the United States Criminal Justice Manual into the EFCC Act, is to fast track adjudication of justice, save cost and time of litigation. But since its application in the Nigeria's criminal justice system, experts say it has rather provided a window for corrupt public office holders to shortchange the country and its citizens in mind-boggling corruption scandals. The latest case of the accountant general. What financial system in the world will allow somebody to take over 100 billion out of its coffers? In the UK, every pound, a single pound cannot be missing in the British financial system without being detected. But you can see in our country, just a group of not more than, not up to 10 people who syndicate themselves as criminals took out over 100 billion in our financial system and all of them now are being granted plea bargain. The kind of plea bargain we are seeing in Nigeria is basically to encourage more corruption and more corrupt people to loot the public treasury because when you steal uh, 10 million dollar through plea bargain you will just return maybe one or two million dollar then the rest of the money is like clean plea bargain. Though alien to Nigeria's laws, creates a lacuna in an effort to tackle the nation's number one enemy, corruption, and provides a lifeline for those cornering billions of taxpayers' money into private use. But the question is, is there a remedy for this misnomer? We have actually been advocating for uh, judicial reform in Nigeria. Administrative justice system needs to be totally overhauled in this country because it's not serving the interests of Nigeria and Nigerians. It is serving those criminals who have perpetrated crime against humanity in Nigeria. And that is why they should quicken the process of repealing that section of the, uh, of the act so that people who are found complicit or guilty of offenses like this can be able to face the law and the right of the law. And so that other people, especially the younger generation, will see that we are not grandstanding criminals. Lawyers say the onus now lies with the nation's legislative arm of government to summon the will and take a bold step to repeal the section in the EFCC Act for a genuine and robust anti-corruption crusade. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Menace of indiscriminate refuse dump. To stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Trust News Update. Here's a recap of some of our top stories. We told you that Lagos government orders arrest of developer others over seven-story building collapse. We also told you that gunmen kill NSCDC officer, kidnap three family members. 
Moving to other stories, the federal government has uncovered 14 assets, including shopping malls, residential estate, polo playground, lands and farmland belonging to a former commander intelligence response team, Abba Kari, a deputy commissioner of police. Kari was said to have failed to disclose his ownership of the properties in different locations in the federal capital territory and Maiduguri, Borno state. Over 207 million naira and 17,000 euros were also discovered in his various accounts in GTB, UBA and Sterling Bank. In a fresh 24 counts charge filed against Kiari by the Director of Prosecution and Legal Services, Jay Sunday, dated August 30, the Attorney General of the Federation stated that the suspended DCP allegedly disguised his ownership of some of the properties. Also, the federal government filed separate 24 counts charges against Kiari's former deputy, Sunday Ubwa, an assistant commissioner of police who is under suspension. In health, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention has recorded 14 deaths in 10 states from suspected cases of yellow fever from January to July 2022. The NCDC made this known via its official website on Sunday. The agency said the cumulatively that cumulatively, a total of 1,179 suspected cases of yellow fever were reported from 416 local government areas between January 1 and July 31. The center said that it is coordinating response activities through the National Multi-Agency Yellow Fever Technical Working Group. Buying drugs without a doctor's prescription equals risking one's life. Health experts gave this hint in Bochi while commenting on why people prefer going to pharmacies than hospitals nowadays. Trust TV's Adam Imam files in this report. Dr. Abdul Salam Abdul Aziz is a medical doctor and he says health workers in Nigeria should insist on standards by giving drugs only when prescribed by doctors. In Nigeria, people have a way of um, going about getting even um, control drugs out of prescription. So basically what we just um, perhaps want to advise the health workers is for both pharmaceutical um, outlets and hospitals. We should, um, people should strictly work based on prescription and all control drugs should um, try to be controlled as the word implies, control drugs. He also explains some reasons why people prefer pharmacy than hospitals in most cases. Time factor is actually crucial. The patient waiting period sometimes affects patronage in the hospital. So when you go from a stuck out there, you could easily get a prescription with over-the-counter drugs or chemists, you understand? But when you come to the hospital, you will rather wait and follow queue. So I think the patient waiting period, especially when it is long, could um, affect the patronage. I mean, are you a pharmacist? Explain how business of selling drugs works and differentiate them with other vendors. Well, pharmacy, the pharmacy store only contain uh, drugs, prescribed drugs and even non-prescribed drugs. While when we are uh, talking of a uh, patent medicine store, they are the local store found around in our local areas. Normally, they are selling drugs even the non-prescribed drugs. Meanwhile, both residents also share their views on the matter. So for me, it's better for, I mean, to walk into the, any other chemist and buy my drugs whenever I'm in need of, uh, you know, a uh, 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 drug for medicine. Number two. Uh, going to hospital, to me, is more preferable than going to chemist. In the sense that if you go to hospital, you'll meet, you'll meet an you know, an expert that will diagnose, give you the results, maybe they will take you to lab, test you, find out the result, and tell you the medication. If somebody goes to the hospital, it's not been taking 50 minutes, it's going to take maybe two hours. So maybe that is why I prefer going to the chemist and going to the hospitals, as far as I'm concerned. Health expert added that people have the right of choice on issues affecting them, though not without risks, but doing what is right, especially on health ground, is worthwhile. Adam Imam, Trust TV News.
Mochi. With a growing population and poor environmental management, almost every part of Mokuri town is home to one indiscriminate refuse dump. The water channels meant for drainages are not spared in this unruly behavior. It was discovered in most of the dumps visited that the activities mostly happen at night. Here is more on the report. The people seen around the refuse dumps in the daytime are scavengers for items who are not guilty of any crime. Those who spoke to a reporter said the government has not taken any decisive role in evacuating the dump sites. Most of the dumps have been around for decades. We should not wait for the government to get the environment uh, need for them because for the sake of your health alone, you are supposed to make sure your environment is kept clean. You make sure your dumps, your waste are being dumped where they are supposed to be dumped and make sure there are no empty container to hold water or stagnant water around. Those whose houses or places of businesses are impacted negatively by these mountains of refuse say there is little they can do to address the act. This is because government has not provided a policy direction or alternatives to manage them. And the reason why people dump refuge at odd places is simply because the government have not supplied the necessary facilities for them to be dumping their refuge inside. And most of the times the people are at fault as well because they go around dumping refuge at night because they know that in the day people will caution them because of what they have done. Some of the residents say it is toxic to live close to refuge dump as there are quite a number of diseases that can be contacted by air or water pollution emanating from the dumps. It is hazard to human health because the people living around these places they dump refuge might end up picking one or two different uh, diseases into their system. Especially children that hawks around. Many of these children, they might pick things on this refuge and eat, which is not also good for, the, for their health. Some people have a um, uh, stream as their own source of water to drink. So if these uh, refuse are drawn to these uh, streams, it might lead to people having issues of uh, diarrhea or cholera. What is worrisome is the fact that in all the sites visited, it appears no community has a plan in place to curtail the menace. Some have accepted the dumps as part of their neighborhood, even as there are no conscious efforts by the government to clear them. Showcasing prospective couples to the world via social media is a trend that has come to stay among would-be couples in the country. Tagged pre-wedding photo shoots, the art of taking pictures and uploading them on social media sites has become so popular that a wedding is considered not to have started without the shoot. Ibrahim Ismail speaks to some prospective couples in Gombe who they, who on why they shoot pre-wedding pictures. Ibrahim Thompson and Emanuela Matthew will become husband and wife as soon as the two lovers prepare to tie the nuptial. Pre-wedding pictures are part of the favorite activities set up by the couple. So generally it's just like an invitation. It's like a publicity telling the whole world that you are about to get married. Because the pre-wedding pic comes in different uh, different models. Sometimes you see it coming with an invitation card. It comes normally with invitation card. Yes, publicizing and telling the world that you're about to get married. And then it's another way of expressing your happiness, you know, to the general public. It's, it's an expression of love, really. And we can use it to, to keep a memory of our love life. We can use it also um, for especially, for example, our relatives that are far, they might not be able to attend the wedding. So we can use it to send them and they want to see the picture of my husband so I can send the pictures for them so that they can see it. And we can use it to decorate our walls in our room. We can use it for memory. The couple's photographer said pre-wedding pictures are very important among Nigerian couples, adding that women love it more than men because i have seen my friend wedding picture i want my own to be like that i want my own to be talk of the town you know that kind of thing that's why nowadays if you if you ask a girl whether she would like to take pre-wedding pictures she would say what 
I must have my fluid. In fact, there are some scenarios whereby a couple had a kind of misunderstanding because of pre-wedding. You know, men, we don't really like snapping, honestly. I'm a photographer. I can tell you in a month how many men used to come and snap pictures, but women come every now and then. If they saw new clothes, they will snap. They play their head, they will snap. Whenever they are happy, they will snap, understand? The prospective couple said they were very careful in their mode of dressing during photo sessions to reflect the culture of their community. Okay, yes. Away from Nigeria, Kenya's Supreme Court has upheld the victory of former Deputy President William Ruto in the August 9 presidential election after ruling on a number of petitions brought by his closest challenger, Raila Odinga. The unanimous verdict was delivered by the chair of the seven-member court, Martha Kume, on Monday. On August 15, Ruto had been declared the winner of the ballot by Wafula Chebukati, the head of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, with 50.4% of the vote to Odinga, 48.8%. In a dramatic split just before the announcement of the result, four of the seven commissioners disowned the result. However, Kume said apart from their 11th hour denunciation of the verification process, the four commissioners have not shown any evidence that the election was compromised. And finally, in sports, Toby Amusan has claimed the 100-metre hurdles gold at the International Stadion Fest of the Olympic Stadium in Berlin, Germany. A 25-year-old claimed the top spot at the ISTAF 2022 Berlin meeting on Sunday, September 4, beating off competition from American Tia Jones, who finished second and Olympic bronze medalist Megan Tapper of Jamaica. Toby Amusan clocked 12.45 seconds to claim first place. Tia Jones finished second with a time of 12.58 seconds, while Megan Tapper of Jamaica placed third with a time of 12.66 seconds. With this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashen Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.